what's up? I'm Steve Eckert, instructor of the project. I'm here with a very special guest. The first time ever we are having an interview with one of the project graduates' spouses, Sabrina Fields. Thank you for coming on and talking with me. Appreciate you taking the time out of your day and coming speaking with us. Absolutely. My pleasure. So this this is going to be something totally different, a totally different perspective than, than most people are used to when we're talking about the project. It's either myself or one of the instructors explaining the project or even the graduates talking about the project or maybe even guys who quit the project. So that's a, a one side of the line. Now we're going to talk to you about the other side of the line, the other perspective. And I'm, I'm thinking it's probably going to be a little different than we're used to, to hearing and talking about. So I'm just as interested in this as I'm sure as everyone out there that's watching this. So let's jump right into it. When when Ben, he was in class 004, if I believe, right? Yes. Okay, awesome. Uh, when he first told you about the problem, just going through your head, when he was just explaining it to you, how did that conversation start? What was it like? Oh, goodness. Um, I don't know that I remember the exact moment he first brought it up to me, but um, it it wasn't out of the norm for him to want to do something like this. Uh, he's done other things before to push himself and grow himself. Um, like he's done a 24 hour walk. Um, he's done training courses, um, that are several days long. Um, that have been very physical, um, nothing to the extent of the project, uh, before that, but, um, so it wasn't totally abnormal for him to find something like this and, uh, approach me about it. And so it wasn't a complete shock. But I think after seeing, um, and so he was a class 004, so there'd only been three classes before him. Uh, so it was still fairly new. Um, and so the few videos and things that I saw was a little more concerned than I had been before. But um, even at the beginning, I knew that he could do it. I had no doubt in my mind that um, it would be something that would grow him and challenge him and um, and change him for the better. That's awesome. So. Pretty much, he had. Did he have your support right from the beginning when he first told you about it? And, and you know, this is an expensive course. This is the highest level of personal development you can have. Uh, did he have, he have your support right from the beginning with it? One, even after you saw the videos. Yes, absolutely. Um, I I know that he's very. Um, particular about the things that he invests in. Um, he does the research, he does the questions, um, just asking people questions, uh, looking online, um, trying to figure out if it is a good fit, if it is worth it um, for the future, for himself, uh, for the amount of money that he's spending. And so, um, I mean, I always trust him with the decisions he's making in terms of that. Um, so yeah, I, I was on board from the beginning. Um, worried for his, <laughs> um, you know, just uh, the physicalness, um, physicality that he was about to endure, um, that part, um, was a little worrisome. I'm just worried how many bumps and bruises and scrapes and everything else he'd come back with, but, um, I knew ultimately it'd be worth it. Awesome. What, what was it about the videos that was like concerning to you? Because those could be a little intimidating. We put like some real cool, high intensity, high energy stuff. And I'm thinking of a, a, a spouse. It, it could be alarming to you. So what was it about the video that you kind of caught your attention? Um, well, at this point, I'm not sure. Cause I know that um, watching, like I've watched his videos from class 004 and I've seen the other videos since. And so I don't, I don't specifically remember the ones from before, but um, being on this side of it and watching the videos of him, um, like the highlight video of himself and of his class, um, it just, I don't know, it brings up this deep sense of pride um, for him, of him, um, just knowing that he would endure something like that to better himself and to better our family. and. Um, I don't know. It just makes me really, really proud. Wow. That's, that's freaking awesome. And, and to hear that there wasn't any resistance from you in the first place, because this is a, a, a pretty expensive course in you know most the way most people would look at it. And to, for you just to trust his judgment and know that he kind of felt the need to do this and not resist him against this. Cause I'll tell you 90% of the men that we speak to, with their excuses is their wives. Oh, my wife wouldn't let me do it. My wife wasn't on board. My wife 
we and, and as crazy as this sounds, they'll tell us my wife will divorce me if I go and do this. If I go and spend this money, like more often than you think, like that's how serious it is. So it's so awesome to hear it coming from this side that you were right on board right away. And I wish these other men and women out there can can see this and realize that's the way it should be, right? You you should have the trust in him to to make those decisions. Otherwise, what that's not even a marriage then. If you have to, if he would have to get your permission, you know what I mean? To, to, if he can go better himself and make himself a better husband, even better father, even better leader. Like what is there to discuss about? There's not much to discuss. If you have that strong relationship already, so that's awesome that you had that already. Why do you think it was important for him to go through this? You kind of know what the purpose of it. It's all about the family, the fitness, the finances and faith, meaning faith in himself and, and self-confidence. Why did you, from your side, and this is the part that we want you to be pretty honest and open about, and he's already made it through, and you already have a strong relationship, so you're not going to hurt his feelings or anyone's <laughs> feelings. When you saw it, what was it inside you that's like, yeah, he needs to go do that because that's going to help you out? What, what was it that you knew he needed to get out of it from your side? Um, I mean, he's... Um... Goodness, he's always been such a good husband, such a good father, um, and family's always been really important to him. I mean, even growing up, their family was really close, um, and um, so all of the foundations for that were there. Um, and even business-wise, like God has given him such a good business mind, um, but he he knows that he can always be better with things, um, and so it. I think still just goes back to um, him always wanting to get better, to be the next better version of himself, um, to keep growing, to keep building on what's already there. Um, and, and I may be jumping ahead with some of this, but the um, one of the things I've seen uh, since him coming back is the way he encourages our daughters um, to push to even going around the neighborhood on their bikes um attack the hill <laughs> attack the hill um we're gonna attack this we're gonna do it we're gonna conquer it we're gonna do well with it um and so seeing their confidence build because of the confidence he had in them because of the confidence that he's, he's had in himself um like that's been incredible to see um not that it wasn't there before he learn some things going through the project, um, sitting through the classes, um, learning from the instructors, ha having that brotherhood um, has just instilled in him more of a sense of um, purpose, I think, um, not just himself, but like he has daughters that he's raising. He has a wife that he's partnering with um, in life. He has a business that he's leading and running. Um, and so it's, um, I don't think there was necessarily one specific area that mm -hmm. he needed improving on, but just knowing that we can always be better at what we're doing. Um, that's really come out a lot in the last year. Wow, that, that just hearing of what you're saying with him doing with your daughter, going up the hill on a bike, that alone makes it worth 10 times, whatever the price is like, just to have that extra little bit of being a, a role model, role model mindset as we call it, just role modeling the way and, and how old is she? Um, our oldest one is six. Okay, wow. And so that's a young age to start programming them into that that mindset. Like that is that's some powerful stuff right there. Like that's that's deep and powerful stuff. That right there makes it all worth it. Like that makes hearing that just makes this interview worth it. Like that is just <laughs> awesome. It makes all the suffering and torture that we put that poor man <laughs> through for 75 hours, it yes. makes it all worth it. Just to hear that, that's just freaking awesome. What are, what are some other significant changes that you've seen in him since he, since he graduated? Um, goodness. I think the, um, I mean, the health, the fitness aspect has always been a big deal to him since I've known him. Um, and my dad passed away when I was 14 from a heart attack. He, um, he was overweight, smoked two packs of cigarettes a day, didn't watch what he ate. Um, and so health has always been important to me because of that. And when Ben and I met, uh, it was already a big deal to him. Um, and so 
that's, like I said, that's always been a part of our relationship, but, um, I think working up to the project, um, being able to do some of those workouts together and then post project, um, watching him recover from that a little bit, um, and how he recovered, uh, was even more different, I think, than, um, cause his mentality was different. Um, just knowing that it was in him, um, knowing that he could do this, he could, he would get better. Um, he would be back to hundred percent eventually. <laughs> um, and then, um, and that, like, I think seeing him recover from that, um, and keep going to keep continuing to get better, um, to keep wanting to work out, to focus on fitness, to, on his health, um, and encouraging us along the way too. Like we do family workouts almost once a week. Um, and I've even, um, starting at the beginning of this year, the days that he gets up super early to go meet with his trainer, um, I try and get up super early to do my workout at home. Um, so just like it's spilling over into, um, into us and hopefully into, um, people he knows, um, people I know. And like, it's, it's a trickle effect. Like it's not just contained within him. Like it's, there's, it's so embedded in him. It's so much a part of him that it's overflowing. It's spilling out. Wow. That's, that's freaking awesome. So it's, it's like being a, a higher level leader in all areas of life, being a role model in all areas of life. That's like a force multiplier. It's affecting you. It's affecting your kids. And think about it. If it's affecting your kids. It's affecting a whole nother generation and everyone yeah. that they're going to come into contact in their life. And the impact that, that Ben is making it on the world, your daughters are going to make 10 times more of an impact because look how young they're starting to think about it. Like what they're getting. It's like a force multiplier. And even just impacting strangers, a stranger in the grocery store, just by the way you're conducting yourself, the way you're carrying yourself. It's awesome. So what I'm hearing you say is, well, let me ask you this. Maybe, maybe not. After he graduated, came back, he's probably full of energy, full of fire, you know, besides the recovering from the, <laughs> right. the suffering and whatever else, little bumps and scratches and bruises that he might've got. Besides recovering from that, he, he probably came back highly motivated, almost seemed a little different, a little awkward. How was it when he first came back with that kind of maybe intensity that he brought back with him and that kind of focus and drive? How did, how did you deal with that? How did you feel about that? Um, it wasn't completely um, abnormal for him, actually. Um, like I've said, that he's, he's a freak just like the rest of us then, basically. <laughs> yes. Awesome. He fits in perfectly around here. You said it, not me. Um, but, um, but yeah, he, I mean, he, we were talking about like books the other day. He is constantly listening to an audiobook or two or three at the same time. Um, and, and he listened to close to 60 books last year alone. Um, and that's, and that's not just even a quarantine year. That's normal for him. Um, and, um, but I think like watching him, there was something with the project that um, it wasn't just him. Um, it affected all of us. And so his drive, even though that had been there before, um, I guess the intensity you're talking about, like with it spilling out, like it's affected me a little bit more too. Like I've, um, um, the change that's, it's been slower with me, um, but the change happening in me um, is because of him, um, because of what I've seen. God doing him what um, happened with the project, um, things he's done since then, um, just the continuing to better himself. Um, it's, I'm slowly catching on like, oh, I can do that too. It's not just his personality. It's, it's a drive that has been fed and continue to grow because he keeps feeding it. He keeps finding ways to, to, feed that drive. Cause it's so easy to just be like, you know what? I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to sit mm -hmm. it out. And then three weeks later, you still haven't picked up a barbell again. You still haven't gone yeah. for that walk or run. Um, and so it's, it's a continual decision to, to keep going, to keep doing. Um, and it's, um, yeah, I keep saying it over and over, but it's, it's affecting all of us in a really That's good way. Awesome. And that kind of answers almost the next question I was going to have is, that so this we it's called a 75 hour course and we'll get people say oh wow i can't spend that amount of money for a 75 hour course from your perspective has this been just a 75 hour course mm -mm. not at all 
it um it started way before uh when he signed up um with the uh, um registration with the pre-interview um even the communication that you guys had with them before they went um like i was a little intimidated <laughs> by you guys um even at the beginning but um and then that week um it was tough i mean obviously he was going through a lot more than i was but not being able to talk to him that week, um, having no idea like where he was each moment. Um, and I still remember finally seeing a video that you guys had posted on Instagram of all the guys pulling the truck with the rope. Um, and I think I must have watched that video about a hundred times um, wow. just to get a, a small glimpse of where he was and what he was doing. Mm -hmm. um, you're like, okay, he's still there. He's still going. Um, this is, this may have been posted 10 hours ago, but like, I know, I know what's happening at least a little bit. Um, he's still in the game. He's still attacking the hill. He's still healthy. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and so it was tough, really tough, not being able to talk to him. Um, but also knowing that, um, that he was okay and learning and growing and being beaten and torn down only to be built back up again. Um, it was really cool. I have a friend whose husband has been in military for, um, I think since they met and even getting some encouragement from her. Um, cause Ben had talked to her husband, um, mm -hmm. about a month before we went, before he went to California. And, uh, she said their purpose isn't to kill him. <laughs> their purpose is to tear him down. Yes. But to build him back up into a better version of himself, um, which you guys have said too. And so, Break I think down hearing that, to break through. That's what we say. We want to break them down so they can have the breakthroughs. Yes. And that's, yeah, that's exactly what um, happened. Um, and so that just kept replaying in my mind again and again from you guys, from what Ben had told me from you guys. And um, hearing it from her perspective, too, was really helpful. Um, even though her husband hasn't done the project, um, he's been on the military side of things and she's been out of communication and, you know, just had those same like, I'm not comparing the project to the military. I know it's, you know, yeah, yeah. two sides. I heard you saying it's, it's a yeah. similar thing. They're, they're away and they, yeah. they, she's, his wife, I'm sure is an expert at dealing with that stuff. And think about the credit that the military wives deserve after you've experienced it for four days. Sometimes they're going a year, right. you know, sometimes weeks at a time with zero communication, sometimes a year or a year and a half with their spouse being away. So they get, they, they deserve a lot of credit also, but yes. you've got a, a taste of what that's like. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. So, so when he came back with this, you know, different level of, even though he's already kind of crazy uh, on, this, on this, you were saying, he came back a little different type of focus, a little different drive, started spilling into everyone, you know, right when he came back. Now, a lot of people go to motivational workshops and seminars and stuff for like a weekend and they come back, they're all on fire on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. And by Thursday, it fizzles out and they go back to living a life of mediocrity and being average. How, and, and he's it's, he's now close to a year, I think, since he's graduated three months, right? It, it's a year this week. Oh, wow. Do you know the date yeah. even? You know the exact time and date. That's <laughs> awesome. So well, the world kind of changed the week that he was gone. So <laughs> that helps. Yeah, yeah. All right. He was the Corona class, we called them. Because, yeah, that's when the whole thing started. Yep. Yep. So did it fade out the energy, the enthusiasm, the drive since he graduated to now, and now it's a year, a year later, is the project still affecting his daily life? Or is it just like people go to those seminars, they jump up and down, they high five people, they're giving hugs to each other and they go home and that fizzles out because it was just fake external motivation. How is it, has it lasted throughout this entire year? Has it faded? Has it grown? Has it, what's it been like? Um, Honestly, there's probably been some fade just because there's been some time and distance, but nothing like the fades that you see after like the motivational weekends you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the, um, the connection with the brotherhood has been huge. Um, he went back as a cadre. Um, and the second he even brought that up, I was like, yes, go do be there, be a part of it. Um, encourage that next class. Um, may have been two classes after his, but, um, I, yeah, I'm, I have been all for it. Um, and he keeps the connections. Um, he'll bring up something like there's this one brother who um, 
does this thing for his business. And so, but we have the connection of the project. I'm like, awesome. Yeah. Like, you know, um, you know that much more about him because he's been through what you've been through, even if you're in separate classes, like it's still, there's still that connection that you don't have with just anybody off the streets. Um, and it's, yeah, I mean, if there's been a fade, it's been like maybe a 1% kind of fade, <laughs> nothing, nothing like so, the 90 to 95% fade that you see from, from other things. So a year later, he's still, reaping the rewards and feeling the benefits and the increased levels of drive and energy and, and focus and enthusiasm that he came back with a year ago, pretty much. Yes. Yeah. That, that's pretty young. So this is far more than just a 75 hour course. It's not, you're going to four days and that, and that's it. You know, that that's awesome to hear that he's still going strong with it. And so he, and he did, he came back as a, a junior instructor for like, like two classes after his graduation. So you're telling me after he went through this, suffering and torture <laughs> that he wanted to come back and, and for more and as a junior instructor and, and let me tell you the junior instructors i don't know if he told you about it they're working harder than the candidates are they are behind the scenes they're up all night setting everything up they are busting their asses behind the scenes so you're telling me he volunteered to take another week out of his life to come <laughs> back and do that and explain that and and would you and you, you mentioned it already but how'd you feel about that yeah i <laughs> I mean, there was, um, I think I thought he was a little less crazy this time around, um, because I knew, um, the benefits of it and the, um, the camaraderie and everything else. Um, the bonus thing this time though was that I was still able to talk to him. <laughs> I didn't have to disconnect from yeah. him for the week. Um, and so it was, um, and I felt like I was a little more on the inside this time too, because he was able to send me updates and, um, mm -hmm. And I kept asking him questions like, how many are left? How are they doing? Like, what's, um, have they been in the ocean yet? Um, have they done the ice bath yet? Have they done this? Are they, how are they handling that? Um, so it was, it Any was cool. horror stories even. that he's told you about me, they are untrue. They're all just made up. Um, <laughs> it's not true. Whatever he's told of you. Of course, about. of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it, um, it was really cool for him to be able to go back um, to have the, the insider's perspective the second time around and he didn't get paid to even go do that right i mean he volunteered his time and that's about a week because it's four days itself he had to get there a day early i'm guessing he left a day later that's pretty much a full week that he was volunteering his time and that's awesome we appreciate that he did that we appreciate you he wouldn't be able to do that and none of the project candidates graduates even us instructors we wouldn't be able to do it without the, the spouses with the support holding down the four to home and you're living with your own project there when you're there by yourself with the kids, I'm sure. So we appreciate you, the support that you give. And, and I wish all the candidates' wives can have a call with you because they would all write you on board just like, like that. That's freaking awesome. You are, you're awesome. So I appreciate that. And, and thanks for that. And thanks for joining us here on the call. So let me just finish off with this. Someone that's in your shoes where their husbands come into them and maybe they're not as good of a relationship as, as you had because, and that's kind of why they need it. What's some <laughs> advice or thoughts you give to that woman or even to that candidate that if they're in that situation? Cause yours is a little, little different. A lot of times men come to the project because they're struggling in their relationship with their, their spouse. So when they go to their spouse for that, they're not getting the support. They tell them, no, you big dummy. You're not going to go spend $12,000 to go to a, a hang out with a bunch of guys in the mud. That's what they see it as. They don't see it as a different level. So what's some words of advice you have for those people who maybe don't have as strong a relationship as you going into that conversation about whether or not they should go to the project? Um, this isn't just a, a weekend getaway with the guys. This is a, a lifetime investment. Um, we, our family, even just in one year, has benefited um, mentally, socially, physically, um, spiritually from the experience that Ben had during those 75 hours. And, and that's just a year, like it's still continuing. Um, there's still classes going through. There's still guys that Ben gets to pour into, um, and to encourage and motivate, um, even from the East coast, uh, he's able to, um, have a connection with guys who are about to experience, um, an incredibly life-changing event. Um, 
that something we've learned in our own um, in our own marriage struggles and um, the marriage counseling and seminars and things that we've done um, is that you can't affect change around you unless you work on yourself um, because you're only responsible for yourself. And so if your husband wants to go better himself, let him (laughs) let him do that, because that's going to affect your marriage, it's going to affect your children, it's going to affect your family as a unit, it's going to affect your neighbors and your friends and extended family um, for years. It's not just going to be a come home, I'm going to recover from my bumps and bruises and move on with life. It's it's a mental change. It's um, it's just the foundation, like it's building a better foundation for um, for a lifetime. It's It's huge. It's worth it. That is freaking awesome. The, the craziest part about this interview right here is I literally just met you when we just went on this this call right now. I've never met you before. We've never spoken before. I sent you one email asking if you'd be willing to come to an interview. And I just said, we're going to talk about your perspective experience before, during, and after the project. And that was it. And this is the stuff you're coming up with. And this just even more solidifies in my mind, like the, the impact and the effect that the project is having on men and their families, because everything you're saying is like, I could have coached, I couldn't have coached you better to say this stuff. And this is just you naturally saying this. This is just, this is freaking awesome. So I appreciate taking the time out of your day. I'll let you get back to the project of being a mother at home and work and kicking ass in life. And if you need anything, if you or Ben need anything, just let me know. We're here 24 hours a day to help you out. And thanks a lot for coming on the show. I'll talk to you soon. Sure thing. Thanks so much.